This new spherical energy storage system from Germany outperforms every industrial and home-use battery by several magnitudes. It's made entirely from abundant materials like concrete and steel, has a lifespan of 60 years, and is two to four times cheaper than any alternative. Its storage cost is an astonishingly low 4.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Developed by Fraunhofer IEE and Kassel, the goal of this new storage solution is nothing less than stabilizing the power grid and permanently reducing electricity costs for consumers and industries alike. A nationwide electricity price drop of around 10 cents could become reality. Germany could become a global leader in energy storage with this innovation, achieving something impossible with conventional batteries. What makes this solution unique? It doesn't store energy chemically, but mechanically. But how exactly does this system work, and how practical is it? Ironically, it all traces back to a challenge my old university professor gave me over eight years ago. After a lecture, he pointed to a simple experiment meant for a school open house and asked, Can you pull these two hemispheres apart? Of course I couldn't. The demo was a miniature version of the famous Magdeburg Hemispheres experiment from 1654 conducted by German scientist and mayor Otto von Guericke. Two hemispheres are lightly pressed together and then air is pumped out of their interior using a vacuum pump. You'd think they'd come apart easily, but they don't. The force of atmospheric pressure holds them together with incredible strength, up to 14,030 newtons or 1.4 tons of force. This concept, using atmospheric pressure to store energy, is what Fraunhofer the EIE researchers have built upon. Unlike batteries, which degrade with each charge and discharge cycle, these spheres can be evacuated and refilled with air endlessly. Energy is stored by creating a vacuum and recovered when air flows back in, driving a generator. The system can also be reversed. Instead of creating a vacuum, it can compress air to store energy. This is known as compressed air storage, but that approach has a major flaw. Next, I'll continue with the second half, where the storage principle using water is introduced. Compressed air storage has long been discussed as a home energy solution, but there's a major oversight that makes it inefficient and largely impractical. It comes down to physics. Pressure and temperature are closely linked. According to thermodynamic laws, generating high pressure inevitably leads to extreme heat loss. While this principle is what makes heat pumps and refrigerators so effective, it works against compressed air systems. Air temperatures can spike to several hundred degrees Celsius, causing energy losses of 50 to 70 percent depending on the design. That leaves compressed air systems with a low overall efficiency of just 30 to 50 percent. Some companies have tried to recover this waste heat for building heating, a sort of bonus heating system, but this only partially mitigates the loss. The inefficiency remains substantial. Fraunhofer IEE's breakthrough solution avoids these issues entirely. Instead of air, they use water, a non-compressible medium, which allows for significantly higher storage efficiency, potentially reaching 70 to 90 percent. That's competitive with lithium batteries, but here's the real innovation. This water-based system can take advantage of geographic depth. In compressed air systems, capacity depends on how much air can be pumped into a container. But with water, you can use natural pressure. Deep in oceans or lakes like Lake Constance, hundreds of cubic meters of water exert force on the storage sphere if it's anchored to the bottom. Just like the Magdeburg hemispheres, but scaled up by a factor of 60. At a depth of 600 meters, each square meter of surface is under 60 tons of pressure. The deeper the storage sphere, the greater the capacity. It functions much like a pumped storage hydroelectric plant, but in reverse. That's why Fraunhofer's storage spheres are designed for the seafloor, but they could also be installed in lakes or flooded mines. They're hollow concrete spheres enhanced with control valves and a pump turbine system. To charge the system, the sphere is pumped empty against the surrounding water pressure. To discharge it, the valve opens, water rushes back in, spins a turbine, and generates electricity. This method could store surplus electricity efficiently and bridge gaps in supply. When energy is plentiful and cheap, the spheres are charged. When demand rises, they're discharged, feeding energy back into the grid. 
It's known as arbitrage trading, and it could realistically slash electricity prices in half. Efficiency and cost are critical here. The lower the storage cost, the more economical the buffering. This is why lithium batteries haven't yet succeeded in this role. They last only 10 to 15 years and cost 110 to 140 euros per kilowatt hour. By contrast, the new storage spheres cost just 158 euros, last up to 60 years, and even accounting for maintenance are two to four times more cost effective. They outperform not only batteries, but even conventional pumped storage systems. According to Fraunhofer researchers, the global potential of this technology could reach 817,000 gigawatt hours. In Europe's top 10 sites alone, it's 166,000 gigawatt hours. For comparison, existing pumped hydro storage has a capacity of only 40 gigawatt hours. Pumped storage plants are limited by terrain and are only viable in select regions. Spherical storage avoids these limitations entirely and it doesn't harm landscapes or freshwater resources like pumped systems do. These traditional setups often suffer from rapid evaporation and growing water scarcity concerns. In terms of efficiency, pumped storage plants still hold a slight lead at 80 to 90%, while the current efficiency of the spheres ranges from 75 to 80%. But this marginal difference is outweighed by the economic and geographic advantages. The spheres are even suitable for seasonal storage with no capacity loss over time. That makes them uniquely suited for long-term grid balancing. For all these reasons, Fraunhofer and EEE is now fast-tracking the first full-scale installation. Following successful trials in Lake Constance, they're building the next system in the US, scheduled for completion next year. It will stand over 30 meters tall, and this is only the beginning. Hundreds more are planned. The research focus now is to optimize manufacturing, installation, operation, and maintenance. If the system proves viable, Germany could leap to the forefront of global energy storage tech, solving one of the energy transition's biggest challenges in a single stroke. We'll keep you updated on all new developments. Also exciting, Germany is making waves in solar technology again. While China has long dominated, a company in Frankfurt is now unveiling solar modules that not only generate electricity, but can replace a heat pump and even produce energy at night. If you're curious about that, click the linked video next.